Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I'm working on a Toro snowblower. It's a 521, it runs for about 20 seconds, stalls, it's leaking some gas, tune up, the whole works. Uh, it's going to be carburetor work. So we'll show you what we need to do to get this thing all fixed up. So here it is, the 521. These are good snow blowers. They're solid metal. They're made when snow blowers were meant to last. It's 5 horsepower, 21 inches, which is good engine to clearing path proportion. And they're worth putting a little bit of money into them. So we'll take a look at this one and see what it needs to be an awesome snow blower for this customer. So this guy said the, the valve was leaking under here. This tank's empty. So I'm going to pull this off and try and go through and replace that valve first. Yeah, this looks pretty rough. I'll bring you in and show you. So if you look at the valve, you can see it's a little bit wet. And he's got two hose clamps on there. So we're going to pull this off and replace it. Just try and get this clamp loose. This is for removing those plastic clips from a car. Panel clips I think they're called. It's a pretty handy tool. Alright, so we'll go and replace this next. And I want to clean the tank because there is some sediment in it. So there is some sediment in this tank and I used to clean these with water but now I just put a little plug on the bottom, open the cap and I've been buying my uh, carburetor cleaner or brake parts cleaner in bulk so I've been able to actually uh, save and rescue and reuse. So I'll put that in there and we'll use it just to get all the sediment in there so we'll shake it up and then we can pour it out in here we'll use a little bit of uh, compressed air and blow that out so I'll put a shop towel in here I use this thing just because it has this pour spout. We'll run it right through there. And this is great for cleaning up carburetors on the outside with a paintbrush. And whenever I clean carburetors, I use the old Bruce Pender trick with the pan. And uh, that takes care of pretty much everything. So I'll cap that off and we'll use that later when we clean the carb. This line is pretty nice and flexible, surprisingly. I'm going to replace this clamp. So usually the chute rotation is in front of the carburetor box, so we're going <clears> to <throat> pull that off, just get out of our way. Put the nut back on so you don't lose it. and. Looks like it's going to have to stay there. So at first glance this air cleaner box does not have the factory bolts. Usually they're 5 16 But this just has uh, some standard screws or regular or slotted whatever you want to call it. And 
They actually look like they're the right thread, so that's good. So we'll pull these out. I don't know what the deal is because about two years ago, the guy had a brand new Aaron snowblower with a blown engine. It ran out of oil or something. I don't know what the story was. But I ended up putting a new engine on for him. And he called and said he has a snowblower he needed me to fix. So I thought it was that snowblower. But he dropped this thing off. I wasn't here. I think he may have gave that other snowblower to his ex-wife. Um, trying to remember what the situation was. All right, well, uh, we're gonna go in and get into this carburetor and see what it needs. All right, so there's two Phillips head screws here. I'm just gonna mark this. I'm putting an arrow facing up. These aren't the original screws either, but they are the right threads. So that looks good. You gotta get this clamp off. These are fuel line removal pliers. Pretty handy because sometimes these are pretty tough to get off. So now we have two 7 16th nuts that we got to get off. But usually what I do is I pull the uh, intake with these. And I'm going to just mark where the linkage went through. Just so I know because there's several holes on that plate. And we'll try and remove this up here. Maybe not. That one's good. Need a bigger drill. If you don't have a bigger drill available, a lot of times you can shock it. So I'll take this impact bit and we'll hit it. We'll see if that works. What happens is rust gets in there, especially with snow blowers. We'll see if that works. We got it. There's a little uh, primer line, and all we have holding it now is the linkage. So we'll bend it down this way, like that. We'll keep the linkage right there, and we got our carburetor. All right, guys, so here's a look at the carburetor. Just give you an idea how dirty it is. This is the original paint when Toro painted the thing. The carburetor was on it, which is pretty common. It's a little overspray. So what we're going to do is clean this off. And that's where this recycled brake parts cleaner comes in pretty handy. So you just put this in this tray, as I was saying, Bruce Pender style. And if you don't know Bruce, he has a great small engine channel. And he always uses a tray when he cleans his carburetor, so that's kind of why I'm saying that. So, we're cleaning this thing off. You can see how much dirt and debris. This is what it looks like cleaned up, doesn't take long, and now none of that dirt can get on the inside of the carburetor. So I put my shop towel filter in there and we'll pour out most of this liquid through the filter. And then the little dirty crud that's left at the end, or I should say like super dirty, We'll just leave that in there to clean the pan. And now I'm seeing a bunch of sediment there. 
So we'll let that filter through and then we'll cap it. It's a good idea to pour it right away because it does evaporate. So now we're going to remove the intake. The gasket looks good. All right, take off the bowl nut. Oh, man, that's tight. I'm gonna have to put this in a vise. So we'll go back over here, pull out the bowl nut. You can see all that gummed up black reddish tar that's old fuel that's why this thing wasn't running pull this out you can see there's a lot of sediment that just came out there in the tray very dirty bowl this is your float pull out the hinge pin You know, this, this carburetor, it's so old that these parts even feel thicker or heavier to me. There's no water or fuel in here, so this thing's good, the float. This uh, bottom bowl seems thicker than the newer ones. It's just aluminum. Sometimes the aluminum corrodes because metal gets in the bottom and starts rusting, and it'll actually rust through or get pitted, and they'll start leaking. Here's our needle. This looks like it's in good shape. And you know, this thing's 25, 30 years old, and that bowl gasket is in really good shape. It's still flexible. So uh yeah, you know, the question is, is it worth repairing this or replacing it? And uh, the truth is of the matter is these machines run best with the original factory carburetors no doubt sometimes you can't get them clean enough to run them so at that point I almost always opt to an aftermarket carburetor but if you have an ultrasonic cleaner which I do and I'm gonna run this thing through a cleaner because it's just dirty enough that it definitely needs it you can usually get these pretty clean and there's some tricks for adjusting them to get them to run properly if they're surging or something like that um, and if you know these little tricks and things um, it's helpful in getting your engine to run properly another thing that I'm thinking of right here is there's an air vent hole you always want to make sure that this hole right up in here is always open because if it's not fuel may come from the tank and come out the throat of the carburetor and it'll be leaking fuel every time you use it and that's just because it's not venting properly so you can put a little wire in there and make sure that that's open I, I'll do that later um, I don't know if this emulsion tube pops out of this carburetor I don't think it does because it's brass usually the plastic ones pop out but anyhow I got this thing torn down there's a little o-ring in here I just left it in there I'm gonna put this stuff in my ultrasonic cleaner and uh, we'll let it soak I'll take this apart as well this is your main jet and fuel adjustment you can see how gummed up that is man oops See that's all black. That should be like shiny brass. So we'll start cleaning these up. So I'm getting ready for the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll put the uh, small parts in this little cage. So 
little brass washer in there. Bigger parts in the cage. And this is what I'm using in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's mostly water and this. I get that at Harbor Freight. It's, uh, it's really good. It's also pretty good if you use it with your pressure washer. So, um, I... Mom, you need to get in here. The kids won't stop fighting. All right, I got to go in, guys. <laughs> so, before I go in, I add a little more of that degreaser to that stank water. I just keep reusing it. It seems fine. And uh, temperature, I like to get to about 60. I think that's about... I don't know, 140 some degrees Fahrenheit. You can see it's at 45. So we'll let that run probably two, two half an hour cycles. And then we'll reassemble and uh, we'll get this thing running. And then I got to do a little tune up on it. All right, guys, wrapped up two cycles here. This baby is hot. So here's what we have. You can see it does a nice job of really cleaning up everything. A lot of sediment in here. Looks pretty good. Little parts and the carburetor itself. So I'm just going to go through and clean these up a little bit and then we'll reassemble. All right, so I wire brushed some of these parts, really cleaned them up. Now I just want to spray them off with some brake parts cleaner. This main jet, I noticed it has a little bit of rust in here. So got this little brush, I'm gonna run that. That looks way better. And I have another one of these a little bit smaller. I'm going to try and run this one up the emulsion tube in the carburetor. See how dirty that is coming out of there. That works pretty good. Now, there's a couple little holes. Right here's the low speed jet. You want to see cleaner coming out. This is the primer. And you can see how it comes out that vent. Put a little bit in here. Not too much because I have that seat in there, which is rubber. This wasn't leaking. I'm going to leave the seat. There's one hole down in here. Right down the throat. That's opened up nice. Just clean out the inside. And this Welch plug, I'm not going to pop it off, but we'll clean out in there. So that looks pretty good for the carburetor body.
Now there's one hole on this main jet up top above the threads. So I'm just going to take the wire from the needle and push it through there. Looks like this wire is just slightly big. So let me get a wire that will fit through there. So this is a gas torch tip cleaner. And it has different size wire in here. Try and find the hole. <laughs> there we go. You know that hole felt like it was clogged up a bit. So you always want to open that up. And I bet you if I would have pushed a little harder with that needle wire, it would have opened up. But it was definitely clogged. Needle looks good. That looks good. So now that we're done cleaning, you can see that this looks much cleaner than the last effort. But we'll put this in here. There's a little bit of water in the bottom, but the water and extra sediment we'll just leave in there. And we'll use that for cleaning the pan. Say right there is good. So I'll just get a towel and clean that out so it's ready for next time. All right, so we've gone this far. So I'm gonna pull the seed out of here. I got this little, uh, this thing is a Tecumseh tool, 670377. Pull the seed out and I'm gonna put in this carb kit. Tecumseh. 631021B. So this has your gasket, needle, seat, pretty much all there. So with the seat, there's like a little ring on this bottom side. So make sure that that little ring goes down. And I'm going to put just a touch of oil on this. Got the oil on there. We're gonna push this down until it bottoms out nice. That looks good. And then we'll put together our needle. Give you a new little clip for it like that. That's gonna go on our float. Just like this. We can drop that right down here. Just like that. Find our hinge pin, push that through. So we're going to test the carburetor. We'll make sure that the needle and seat is working. So with the carburetor upside down, I can blow some air in here. No air should go through. And then I'll carefully let the float down a little bit like this. See how I'm supporting it? You don't want it to fall, you'll lose your needle. And you can hear air going through there. So that means the needle and seat is functioning properly. So here's a new bowl gasket. So that should just lock on here. The compass at least gives you a pretty substantial bowl gasket. And when you look at the bowl, it hinges here this groove should go back towards the hinge like that. They give us a gasket here. So this gasket 
um, will go on this main jet just like this. And I think the original may have been missing because I didn't even see it. And then <clears throat> this is the screw for the main jet and there's supposed to be a gasket in here. So it should be spring, then a little small brass washer. Then I usually get these little gaskets. If you type that part number in, you can get a 50 pack. I think they're on eBay or Amazon, one or the other. But we'll get one of these guys out. And we'll slip it on here like this. And this threads up into here. Try that again. There we go. Seat it and then come back about a turn and a half. That'll put you in the ballpark. So there it is seated. Half a turn, one turn, one and a half. All right, so that should be good. Don't forget that gasket. And this goes on the bowl. And you tighten it up with a 7 sixteenths. Usually about a three quarters of a turn is pretty good from when you have it hand tightened. All right, so that looks good. Um, the only other thing that we need is the low speed jet. There is a gasket in here, so I'm going to dig this one out. There it goes. You can see over time these gaskets get flattened. This this one's pretty good shape actually. But it takes the same one. If you get these gaskets or O-rings from Tecumseh, you're gonna pay like three bucks for each one. I probably paid about five bucks for this whole pack. All right, so we got that, and here's our low speed jet. We've got a spring on there, brass washer, and then our gasket will go on the end. I'm trying to push it on a little bit so I can get those threads going. There we go. And then this guy is gonna go in all the way to its seats and then turn it out like one turn and this this adjusts your low speed so it's not uh, idling you can turn this a little bit or if it's surging you can open this up a little bit so that's what's nice about these old carburetors they have all the adjustments on there this is your idle set screw which they have that in pretty far so it looks like it wasn't idling so I'm going to back this guy out a little bit, and as I back that out, um, this throttle plate's moving. So that's good. You want to make sure it's spring-loaded and it's opening and closing on its own. Alright, so we'll put the rest of this back together, and then we'll throw it on the machine. One other quick thing. If you remember in the beginning, I marked this hole. I took that little... Uh, engraver I had and I put that mark there so that's where the throttle goes through in case you didn't mark yours also I put a mark right here I drew a little arrow up so this goes on with the two screw holes at the bottom and this goes through here for the choke so that's how that goes together and now we'll put it on the machine
So I'm going to add some fuel and I'm going to leave that cover off because I want to tune the carburetor if needed. Well, I have a little issue. Our carburetor is leaking out this elbow. So I'm going to replace that elbow. So we're going to try and remove this nipple. And a good way to do it is with a vice grip. Set that vice grip so it's the exact same size, slightly tighter than the nipple. And now twist and pull it backwards like that. And now I got to get one of these plastic nipples, which I should have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some acetone in this plastic. What happens is the acetone makes that plastic a little bit mushy. And it sticks quite well. So now it's all nice and soaked there. And we'll slip it on here. Now we're in and we'll turn it a quarter turn just like you do with like PVC. That should be good. And you want to let that sit a couple minutes and then I'll reconnect the line. So we're hooked back up with no drips. So we can put this guy on here. And we're ready to test this thing out. Alright, so this thing doesn't have electric start. And the key switch is disabled, so I'm assuming it... Uh, fires or has spark. Alright, we're choked. That's a good sign. We'll knock off the choke a little bit. guys so that one really runs nice I didn't even have to adjust anything I just slowed down the top rpm a hair just because it seemed like it was kind of screaming but it idled nicely everything is uh, working good I ran it for a little bit I got it hot you notice I did forward and reverse I now know that there's a little bit of an issue with reverse so when I do the tune-up I'll take care of that um, but anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I realized that about 
65% of you guys that watch the videos are subscribers. So the other 35%, I'd like you to subscribe. So if you can do that, that would be great. I'll list the parts down below. And uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one. Take care.